In this lecture, we are going to have a look at schematic symbols. Electronics and PCB design have their own symbolic language. This language is written in schematic diagrams, and we're looking at one of them here. This schematic diagram is from the Arduino Pro Mini. And I actually want to just concentrate on one part of this diagram and have a look at it and look at the information that the schematic diagram provides us. So I'm going to zoom in to the top left part of the diagram right here, which depicts the power supply sub-circuit of the Arduino Pro Mini. And let's zoom a little bit more. There you go. Okay, so in this example, as I said, you can see the schematic symbols of several components that make up the Arduino Pro Mini. The larger one of those components, this box right here, has got a designator, U2. This is a linear voltage regulator integrated circuit. Down here you can see its model number. It's MIC or MIC 5205. So this symbol contains several pins that provide inputs and outputs, and each of them is named. So here, for example, this is an output. You can see its name here and the pin coming out of the rectangular component. On the other side, we've got the voltage input. Here is its name, and you can see the pin coming out of it. And from the pin, you have wires that connect this pin to other components like this capacitor here which is an electrolytic capacitor. It's got a designator C19. And you can also see here in the schematic that this capacitor has got a value of 10 microfarads. In the schematic, you can also see the three capacitors. So there's C19, as I said already, there's C13 and C10. This capacitor here is not electrolytic. You can see that it's got a different symbol. This is just a, a normal capacitor without any polarization. Then you've got an LED. Its designator is LED1. You've got resistors, R11, for example. There's the R11 resistor, which is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. You've got a jumper up here jumper connector we've got power connectors vcc and then ground we also have the raw power in this is the unregulated voltage that comes into this sub circuit and then at the output we get regulated voltage all of these symbols follow a particular standard and there are several standards available but most notably engineers around the world tend to work with the American style IEEE or the European style IEC. Let's jump to EE schema to have a look at uh, examples of these different standards of notation. So let's add a symbol. I go to the add symbol button or just type the A key anywhere inside the canvas and that will bring us the choose symbol window or the symbol chooser in other words. And let's start with the simple resistor. If I type R then in the search box and you can see that lots of symbols that start or contain the R letter appear, first of which is the resistor. And the resistor that you see here is using the European style notation. So I can take that and drop it onto the schematic design sheet and it looks like that. It's just a box with a couple of pins coming out of it. Now let's say that you wanted to use the IEEE notation. Let's go back to the symbol chooser and then instead of just R, type in R underscore US and that will bring up the IEEE symbol of the resistor, which looks like that. And you can also drop it onto your design sheet. It looks like this. Now there's other symbols as well that have IEEE or a IEC notation. So for example, I can think of capacitors. So this is the European style capacitor. There are also other capacitors, you can see down here, that use the US notation or IEEE US notation. This is a polarized version of a capacitor. This is in IEEE and this is in the European style notation and so on. There's a small version in the US style, polarized version in the US style, etc. I'll drop that in here as well, just uh, to complete our example. So here's the capacitor and let's do just a IEC style capacitor 
just to see the difference between them. Okay, this one of course is not polarized where this one is. Let's get uh, uh, European style, but polarized. It would look like this. So let's push this out of the way. So we can see the compared symbols side by side. So that's some examples using passive components like the resistors and the capacitors here. But going back to the symbol library, as you can see here, there are certain other libraries that also have the IEEE suffix indicating that these libraries contain symbols according to the IEEE standard. So the 4XXX is one such example. You can see we've got two 4XXX libraries, uh, one that is using the European notation and one that is using the uh, IEEE notation. And this is an example just to compare. Let's have a look at the 4 or 20, which is a triple carry binary counter divider. It's this integrated circuit right here. And we've got two different options to choose from. This is the IEEE, and it looks like that. I just gonna take it and drop it onto our design canvas. So this one here is the IEEE version. And then we also have the European version, or it's a non IEEE version that looks like that. So let's drop it on to our design sheet. And I'm going to duplicate that. Oops, that's not IEEE. <laughs> I'll do it again. Let's call it non IEEE, like that. And you can see the differences on your own. Uh, don't have to really explain what they are. So I'll leave it at that. Just keep in mind that you have a choice. In many cases, you have a choice of which standard notation symbols to use. At the end of the day, it's really your choice as to which one you want to go for. But the only thing that I want to say here is to not mix symbols. So either decide to go with this style, so the European style symbols, or with the American style symbols, and don't jump and mix the two styles. Go for one or the other and commit to that standard. <laughs>